Hello everybody and welcome back to the AccuVibe YouTube channel. What we're going to do in today's video is give you a rundown of the 977 Class 1 Sound and Vibration Analyzer from Svantec. And what we want to do in today's video is primarily do some audio recording tests, show you how you can push some of these audio files to Svantec servers and you can download them from the data files in your project functions. I've already done a video on how to set up projects and stuff like that, so I will skim over a few things um, fairly quickly, but we're gonna look into the configuration and setting the alarms and thresholds that we wanna do some audio recording. So let's dig into it. What we have first of all is a station list. You are all aware of this, and we have our project list now. So I'm gonna hit the project list. You won't have a user list here, but what we can do is search for our instrument. And here it is. So I've already put this into a project, but just to go over it quickly, we have edit parameters here. This is the project description, audio recording test project, the location, and what tabs we wanna see in the live view on Svannet. I'm gonna press okay for those. And we have some further settings about measurement points. So in these projects, you can have you know 10 measurement points, different stations in one project. I've named mine SLM Logger 1. I've put the serial number for the short name, uh, what we're doing here, and also the pick from the map, which has been done in a previous video, but using Google Maps, you can zoom in to wherever your instrument is and pick it from Google, and that'll pop up on our live view. We also have our station list, so some of you might have a few different stations assigned to your Svannet account, and this is where you will find them in a drop-down menu. Just take note, if you are moving these instruments from a project to another project, just go into the drop down menu and select none. Don't delete the measurement point because you will lose the data in that project. So if you're moving them around, select none and then you'll have it in the drop down menu and you can add it to another project. So for today's example, I'm using 69754. So we can scroll down, find the instrument and press OK. Let's dig in now to station configuration. This is reading the instrument settings that are on the Svanet unit itself now. So we can read those settings on Svanet, we can change them, and we're gonna really talk about some alarms here, which I think is what a lot of people are requiring. So we're just gonna wait for the station settings to load, and we will get into it. All right, so basically, like you have the instrument in your hand, we've got the same settings on Svannet, measurement setup, level meter mode. I'm gonna put it to one third octaves. We have update local clock. So this is the clock on my PC. This will be read if the instrument is out, uh, not in sync with the time on the computer. So for example, daylight savings, you log in the next day, you'll see it's read. You can just hit update and it'll update the instrument's clock. Now, one great feature, start sync, 15 minutes. Do you want your data to be ni data nice and clear on the 15 minutes? We're gonna sit, select yes. Mode, sound, as I said before, it's a vibration analyzer as well. You can set this up for single axis vibrations with a single axis accelerometer. For today's video, we're gonna do sound. So the range, low, you can play around with whatever settings you require. I'm just gonna run you through them quickly. Profile one, two, and three. Svan sound level meters have three profiles running simultaneously, like having three different sound level meters, all interchangeable, A, C, Z, and everything you would need there. We have fast, impulse, and slow, and once again, the detectors for each profile. We have our spectrum filter. Do we want it in a Z spectrum or an A weighted for the human response? I'll do A for today's video. Microphone compensation, we'll leave that on. The microphone filter, a lot of you are using these as loggers in the field, which is basically what this uh, is about. So we're gonna put on an environment filter, which is compensation of the all weather windsock. So we leave that on. Rolling LEQs uh, has been mentioned in another video also. Now we're gonna he head over to storage. We're gonna enable the data logger. We're gonna have logger splitting. So some clients wanna have a different log file every hour, for example, so they can push it to their own servers, CSV, all that sort of stuff. I'll come to that shortly. But this is where you can select it on. So you can have it every day. You can choose what time, midnight every day. You'll have a new logger file. We can also do this in the memory clearing settings on the automatic download page, which we'll get to shortly. I'm gonna leave it as disabled for now. And I'm gonna turn the whole logger splitting off. 
Summary results, we know what that's about. Typically environmental noise, 15 minute logging periods are based on a 15 minute chunk of time. Um, that's where we're gonna get our statistics, L10, L90, background levels and averages over that period. So for the summary step, I'm gonna change that to 15 minutes for the video. Uh, where are we? 15 minutes, infinite cycles. We want it to keep rolling after that 15 minutes, not to stop. You can change it if you want to whatever you require. Statistical levels, these all are standard. You can change these to what you want. All of those statistical levels will be in the data file at the end. And time history. Based on the 15 minute chunk of summary results, we still have one second point of data on time history. So you're not gonna lose anything. Don't be concerned about the summary result 15 minute periods. And then you can tick on and off all the parameters you want you know leave them on it's not going to use up too much data 977 has a large sd card and now span net servers can really push this data quickly it's not a big issue but for today why don't we just turn off c and z because i'm not using them um, save spectrum if you're doing one third octave data you're going to want to save that data so let's leave that on options for a radio station we are not using that today audio recording so this is a, a default settings. You can play around with them how you know how you need. I believe EPA wants 48 kilohertz sampling rate. Play around with it, see how you go, but we're gonna leave that as standard for now. And event trigger. So this is where we can set all of our alarms and also our audio recording thresholds and triggers. So let's do one as an example. We're gonna add an event. I'm gonna call this event audio. So after that, we press the tick icon to save the name of the event. First of all, we have the time conditions. You can do this Monday to Friday. You can do it every day. You can do it at different times in the day, or you can tick off the weekend, for example. I'm just gonna leave it all on. Once that trigger goes Monday to Sunday, all the time during that time, it's gonna be there. So now we're gonna hit our trigger. We're gonna add a threshold. So. Let's do the first alarm as an LAEQ, for example, and we might do an LAEQ 15 minute summary result profile one. Level plus, you can do level minus, and we have our threshold 75 dB. Let's press OK to save that, and OK once again. Now, we've got the event here, but now we wanna action it. So what do we do when this is reached? We have a few options. We have a marker. That means in your data file, along the bottom of the time history, you'll have a little chunk of a marker. So for example, you can track it down pretty quickly when these events were occurring. We can have the audio, so we want it to record audio, which I'm gonna do in a second. Um, the IO alarm, if you have an audio visual alarm, and an SMS and an email alarm, you wanna send it to colleagues on site, whomever. You can do that, add the recipients. I've done that in the project videos already. So let's go back to add an action and we want to record the audio. We have a pre-trigger up to two seconds and we also have a duration of the audio that we want to record. I'm going to do it as two minutes. We have some clients using continuous audio recording in the field. They have a 128 gigabyte SD card and they go and swap that every week, for example, manually. Otherwise, it's too much data for SvanNet to handle. But if we're doing two minute uh, recordings of you know, train pass bys, for example, this is where we can set a nice little two minutes. It'll, it'll download to SvanNet and we can grab that pretty quickly. So we're gonna press OK. We also have a minimum break. So for example, once this audio recording is triggered, maybe five minutes later, we don't want it to trigger again within five minutes. You can have a minimum break, an hour, for example. You don't want it to continuously trigger if whatever surroundings you're measuring. You can set it here. I'm gonna leave it as off. Press OK. Now for this example video as well, I'm going to do another event. So let's call this the audio two. Audio 2, once again, press the tick icon. Time conditions with no trigger, plus the threshold. All right, so for this alarm, I'm gonna set an LAE peak one second alarm. So once the threshold is reached at 75 dB, it'll be a one second alarm. It's gonna look for that. But what we have is another feature here to really prevent unwanted alarms and to really know that the duration of the alarm has been met. So for example, we can set a start time of five seconds, for example. So as long as that five seconds, that peak is still there, 
it's going to record the audio then. So what this does really is remove the unwanted alarms. For example, a loud bang, it's triggered your audio recording, but you've got a train passing by, for example, for a minute, then this is where we can hold that alarm basically for five seconds. It's going to register it and then it's going to record it after that five seconds. So really nice feature there. You can set, start and stop this. This is all interchangeable. So play around with it, but it's a really good feature. So let's press OK and OK once more. And for this example, I'm doing audio only. Let's do an audio time of two minutes once again. And we push that in and we press OK and we apply the settings. So we've done the instrument configuration now. We've set up our alarms. I'm gonna go back two stages. Let's look at the live results coming through. Put on the automatic downloading and we shall get a data file and I can show you some basic analysis with it. So once that's sent, Okay, so now we've got that. I'm gonna go back to the project list and we'll see our project there with our instrument. We know it's configured correctly. We're happy with that. What I'm going to do is hit the automatic download. I've already run through in a different video the sharing tab, so I'm not gonna go into that today, but I wanna select this automatic downloading period. So we can have anywhere from continuous up to 24 hour download, that's how often it's gonna transfer data into Svannet. It depends how often you want the live view. So for example, live view will update every five minutes or continuously. For our loggers and our clients, it just depends. Five minutes is fine, 10 minutes is fine. It just rem it takes away the amount of battery that the um, modem is using. So for today, I'm gonna use continuous because it's in the office, it's on mains, I'm not fussed about it. Uh, file types, result files, logger files, WAV files, CSV. Let's leave that as on. Um, you have a file upload destination. This is where you can push data to your own FTP servers. You will have to play around with that. If you know about FTP, you'll be all over that already. We have some automatic download alarms. So this is basically Svannet actually analyzing data files when they come in and then we can set alarms. That's uh, for another video another time and also multi-point alarm. So we do get inquiries when you have three stations, you know, in a field, for example, when two conditions are met from two stations, Svannet will analyze that and then send an alarm based on your project with multiple stations. Great feature. Scheduled memory clearing, depends how much data you're chewing through. You know, to, if you're recording audio, maybe follow it a bit better. I'm gonna do a weekly at Sunday at midnight. I know no one's doing any works. And we want to clear all the same settings as what is being downloaded. And we're going to hit apply. So now that we've got the automatic download uh, active, we can start to see some data. But what I need to do first is start a measurement. Now we have a little icon here turning around. Um, and that shows us that the automatic download is now running. So now we have blue lights on everything. We have our no alerts, instrument is running, some battery state, GSM signal, automatic download is now back downloading some of the data that we were just testing before. This is where you can see it, progress zero of 18 files. It's downloading a log file. When it comes to memory clearing, it's not gonna clear the instrument until everything is downloaded. You'll have little alerts that pop up here. What some people do require though, is a manual clear of the cache. For example, the instrument's filled up and you haven't done your download settings correctly, you can manually clear the instrument cache from here. So pressing the status, clear the instrument, it'll stop the measurement and wipe it, and then it'll go back to blue. So you'll have an icon saying there's no logger space left.